Hello and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the Harry Carey of board game review shows. Hey, what's going on? Ladies and gentlemen, ever since I started the Discriminating Gamer, people have been telling me I've been bound for ruin. Well, that only makes sense then. Today we'll take a look at Rune Bound, 3rd edition from Fantasy Flight Games. Bound 3rd Edition from Fantasy Flight Games is, of course, a new edition of a classic adventure fantasy game. Now, I have not played the previous editions. I did not play Runebound 2nd Edition, uh, which was around for quite a while. So I'm just uh, reviewing the 3rd Edition on its own merits. I'm not comparing it to previous editions. Now, the game is for two to four players. Essentially, you're taking on the roles of adventurers in kind of Terranoth, which is, of course, the... Uh, fantasy flight uh, fantasy universe. It encompasses games like Battle Lore, uh, Rune Wars, and others. And so you're going into this, if you've played some of these other games, the, the theme will be quite familiar to you. Now, at the very beginning of the game, you're going to choose a character. And these characters, they're, they're typical tropes from, uh, you know, from fantasy, wizards, uh, d dwarves, elves, etc., etc. You're also going to pick a scenario. Now, the game comes with two scenarios. It comes with, like, a battling a dragon scenario and a kind of battling an undead necromancer scenario. They're going to have different conditions, and they're going to call for the use of specific cards in different decks throughout the game. So it's very important that you use the appropriate decks because they're going to further kind of the story of the scenario you're playing. Now, you're going, to set, you're going to put a bunch of different gem tokens all over the board, and they're different colors, and these colors correspond to different adventure decks. Now, you're also going to have a story deck, and some story stuff's going to come out occasionally, and a few other little bells and whistles. You're going to set up a... Um, there's different, four different big cities, and in these different big cities, you're going to set out item cards that you can buy from later. You're also going to get, everybody's going to get certain skill cards. Now, these skill cards, you don't start out with them. You can potentially buy them or earn them later, but you can't start out with them. You also have a number of combat tokens, and more on that later. On a player's turn, he can do several actions. The first thing he can do is move. Now, movement in this game is pretty unique because the dice in this game, they're not used for combat, they're used primarily for movement. Essentially, what you're going to do is you're going to roll the dice, and as you roll these dice, they have different uh, terrain types that pop up on them. Some of them have two different types of terrain. And you can essentially move along that terrain up to whatever how many dice you roll, depending on what your character is. Uh, so long as you've rolled specific terrain types, you can move across it. You can always move just one, uh, without rolling the dice, but if you roll the dice, you can only move along the, the specific uh, terrain types that uh, you rolled. There's also kind of a wild symbol on the dice. You roll that, you can go wherever you want for that particular dice. You can move along roads and bridges, too, just by spending any dice of any terrain type. That doesn't matter. The dice themselves, you need to put stickers on, which I'm not a big fan of, um, but that is something you got to know going into it. You can move into a big city, and once you're in a big city, you can buy from the shop. Now, there's three cards already out there. You can draw a fourth card, choose which one you want of the fourth cards. If you decide you don't want to buy any, you simply discard one, so there only has three remaining there at any given time. Now, these things can help you in combat. They can give you certain other advantages, so they're nice to have. Next, you can go on an adventure. Essentially, what you do is when you go to one of these gems for two actions, spending two actions, you can flip one of the gem tokens over and take an appropriate card from the appropriate deck. Now, typically, once you move and then you take a card by flipping over a gem, that's your turn. you got to wait until your next turn to actually go on the adventure. But the adventure will tell you to go to certain areas on the board. It will direct you to certain areas to do certain things. There might be skill checks. You may have to roll the terrain dice to see what you get. If you have to do a skill check, um, one of the things you do is you actually draw from the skill, uh, the skill deck, and you draw until you get a number of successes. And successes are represented by a little star that are on some of the cards. You keep drawing however many you, you, you are allowed to draw until you get a star. If you don't draw any stars, you don't get any successes. 
Now, additionally, some of the cards may not be adventures. Some of the cards you draw may be events. They may cause different things to happen in the game. Uh, there may be monsters that come out that you have to fight in combat. We'll talk more about combat later, but that may be something that comes out of these decks. And the different decks, you know, have, have, there's, there's, a, there's a social deck, a quest deck, and an enemies deck, and they prim primarily are going to be those things in those categories, but not necessarily. You may get, there may, there's some mixture, there's some overlap, but you know if you pick the enemy's deck, the odds are you're going to fight an enemy. You can rest. If, if you've taken damage, if you're in a big city, you can just do a rest action, clear it all. Otherwise, you've got to roll, if, if you're not in the city, you've got to roll dice, and then if the train type matches the train you're on, you can start removing uh, some of the uh, damage you've taken. And then also you can do a train action. Now a train action is very interesting because what you can do is draw a number of skill cards up to your hand size. Now I, you're probably already going to have your hand size, but you draw more up to your hand size. And then essentially you go through and you decide which ones you want to keep, which ones you want to discard. Now again, you don't get these cards immediately. You still have to earn them. Because when you fulfill the adventure decks, when you when you go on an adventure and you get it, you get the card as a trophy. And some of these skill checks will require you to spend trophies in order to get the skill decks. You're either you're going to have to spend them with specific colors, or if it's just gray, you just have to spend one of any type. But the skill cards are cool because, again, kind of like the items you're buying in the store, they give you special advantages, bonuses, maybe in combat, maybe adventuring. They may give you action bonuses. There's all sorts of things you may get from those specific cards. So those are the basic actions that you can take. Now, combat. Combat in this game is quite unique. You don't roll dice. You have two-sided tokens, and these tokens have different... Um, abilities on them. They have different attacks or defenses. Shields or defense. You may have a magic attack. You may have a melee attack. You may have a melee attack times two. And essentially what you both do is you, almost like you're rolling dice, you shuffle, you shake the uh, tokens and you just let them go. And however they fall, that's what you've got to work with. And then you kind of take turns battling back and forth until one side or the other knocks them out. Now, if you're battling the game, if you're battling one of these monsters in the game, then the player to your right, he kind of takes over that monster you fight and then the next person can actually go while you two are having combat because it can be a long uh, game otherwise. Now you also have a time track, and you have a time marker with a 1 and a 2 on it. It goes all the way down once, then you flip it over, and then it goes all the way down twice. And what's going to happen is, along the track at certain intervals, there's, first of all, the gem refresh card. So you hit that, you flip up all the gems back to their refresh side. And there's also the story deck. Essentially, if you if the, the marker lands on the story deck, you draw a story card. Story cards, they're kind of like grand events or maybe great quests or adventures you can go on. And you can actually put one of the uh, story quests at the top of the board, and it corresponds to some token you'll play somewhere, meaning if you go there, you may get something. Like, for instance, when you're fighting the dragon, you're trying to collect lore because that makes the dragon less powerful if you fight him if you have lore. And so there's a lot of things that send you everywhere to find lore. Typically, your enemies are becoming more powerful too. During that second act, they're going to get some more options when they when they roll their uh, or they throw down their tokens. So as you're getting more powerful, so too is the your enemies becoming more powerful in order to kind of keep a fair fight as the game goes on. Now, essentially, this is what the game is. You're all going around trying to soup up your abilities. You're trying to make yourself more powerful. You're trying to make yourself stronger so that you can take on the big bad guy. Because at the end of the game, that dragon or that necromancer is going to appear on the board, and you're going to have to fight them, and they are very powerful. So you want to make sure you have a lot of power to take them on. You go, you do combat with the big baddie. If you can defeat him, you win the game. This is not cooperative. Every man is for himself, and so whoever beats the big baddie wins... Runebound. So that is just a bare, bare, basic overview of how you play the game. There is really a lot more to it than simply that. There's a whole lot going in this, a whole lot going on in this game. Now I've got to tell you. Uh, so I had seen Runebound Second Edition at a game store for years. I'd gone to this game store, you know, occasionally every now and then. I'd seen this sad little second edition of Roombound sitting on the shelf. And I always thought, man, that looks so fun, but I could just never pull the trigger on it. And then one day, of course, it wasn't there, and I'm like, ah, you know, I should have picked that up. And I was, it was one of these games, too, that I was really upset that I never picked up. So I was rather excited when Fantasy Flight Games announced they were going to do a third edition. I thought, all right, this is pretty cool. I'm finally going to get a chance to play this game. When I'm looking at it, looking at what looks like a great narrative adventure, it's got combat, it's got some cool minis... It, it, it's just got a lot of fun things going on. My my gut reaction is, this is a game I'm going to love. And I was so excited to play it. 
I finally got it to the table. My friends and I sit down, we start playing Runebound 3rd Edition. And the game that I was hoping to love... Nailed it! It's a great game! I really enjoy Runebound 3rd Edition. It's, it's a lot of fun. It is really a lot of fun. It is a grand narrative adventure. It, it reminds me of like Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror, but in a fantasy kingdom. And not exactly, like I said, this isn't cooperative, but, but there's very much that feeling there. I like how this game presents that big, epic fantasy feeling on your table with the cardboard. I think it does it so well. This is a fantastic game from start to finish as far as I'm concerned. I'm not wild about the stickers on the dice because I had some of them come off a little bit. That really upset me. I was not happy about that. But I like the idea of movement. I like how you're using the dice for the terrain tests and whatnot. Uh, I like the options when you go shopping. I like the training. I like just the synergy. I like the adventures and how one thing leads to another and it leads to another and it allows you to, you know, on some hands get gold but other hands Get, get get trophies and there's just all these different little things that come together that just create this this wonderful wonderful game i really 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 like runebound this is a game i thought i'd like and it turns out i love it it's really good i just completed my top 100 games of all time i gotta play this one some more but that i'm thinking this will definitely be on the list next year i'm gonna say it could be top 10 next year could be i'm not prepared to say it yet i gotta play this one some more but could be top 10 that's how much I like this game. I really like Runebound 3rd Edition. I had a ball with it. Now, having said that, having given you my opinion, I want to talk about Holly. So Holly played the game with us. And Holly's, you know, she and I, we like a lot of the same games, but we're not on the same page about everything. Holly did not really care for this game. I don't think she hated it, but she just was kind of, eh. I thought she'd really like it because she loves Arkham Horror and Eldritch Horror. And, I, and the game, can, to me, really feels like that. It, it feels like one of those games. She said she didn't really feel the narrative experience. She felt like she was just bouncing around, not really accomplishing anything. The game felt kind of random to her. You know what? It is kind of random. It, there is a randomness to this game. I will absolutely grant her that. But still, in spite of that, it, I just really took to it. She didn't get that much involved in it. But I liked it. My buddy George, uh, Holly's husband, he really liked it. Aaron Rawson, who played with us, he really liked it. I mean, everybody I know that has played this game so far, except Holly, has really liked this game. So I was kind of surprised at her objections. I didn't share them at all. One other thing I want to comment on is the combat system with the tokens. Now, generally, it's a fun system. I, I didn't know if it would work. It works. It's, it's, it's a good system. It works. But, if I'm going to be perfectly honest here, if there's one thing I could change about this game, I would rather just be doing dice combat. I would just prefer a regular kind of dice combat, maybe mitigated by cards. To me, I think that would, would have probably been a little bit more fun, but I just love rolling dice. The token thing was fun, it was interesting, but it almost just felt like it was gimmicky. It was, let's just do something different to do something different. And I just, eh, dice work fine. So I kind of wish there had been... A, a, a dice version of combat. But that being said, that it, it didn't kill the game for me, and it, it works. It, it, it's fun, it's interesting, it works. I just would have preferred dice. Nitpicky problem among a, in a game that I think is, as I say, absolutely brilliant. Runebound 3rd Edition is great. It's one of those games that as soon as I finish playing it, I'm like, ah, let's play it again, let's play it again, let's play it again. I love it. I really, really love Runebound 3rd Edition. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer is we cannot recommend it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Buy it. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Buy two or buy three. Just buy it. Buy it! Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on the Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on the discriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are the Discriminating Gamer. And remember, Runebound and the Masters of the Universe. No? Is that the wrong one? I get them confused. They're both fun. Please somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Where you go, Christian T. Peterson? You're from Denmark, you know? I wanted to go to Denmark just for the footwear. 
wooden shoe. That's, that's, that's Holland. Wooden. That's Holland. <laughs> oh, screw it! That screws up my toe! <laughs>